Deuteronomy 11, verses 1 on to verse oh, 12. Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and keep his charge, and his statutes, and his judgments, and his commandments always. Know ye this day, for I speak not with your children, which have not known, and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm. See right there, that's inferring that the elders out there, the ones who've been there, done that, are the ones that ought to be intuiting onto the kids. What are they intuiting onto the kids today, I wonder, here in America, right? <clears throat> Let's continue. And his miracles and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt, unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and unto all his land. And what he did unto the army of Egypt, unto their horses, and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you, and how the Lord hath destroyed them unto this day. <clears throat> and what he did unto you in the wilderness. See, you go through these things for experience. And so that you as an elder, someone who has experienced that, you don't rub it in the, well, I've done it. No, you're supposed to share your experience, not to lord it over them like a, like a Nicolaitan, you know what I'm saying? I know, why is it a lot of these elder Christians always resort to rubbing it into the face? I wonder, I wonder. And what he did unto you in the wilderness until you came into this place, and what he did unto Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Iliab, and I don't have a pronunciation key in this one. The son of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their households and their tents, and all the substance that was in their possessions, in the midst of Israel. So we see here that um, obviously in Deuteronomy chapter 11, Israel is the apple of God's eye. Uh, today, on to this day, Israel is the apple of God's eye. We have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. We have part of their inheritance in the brethren. What are you doing, Doc? I'm trying to cross the road and making a video. You hold on there, sugar britches. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, verse 8. Now I'm in an alley. Ooh, an alley in Woodstock. <laughs> and that ye... Okay. Therefore... Shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong, and go in and possess the land. Ah, here we go. The land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give it unto them, and to their seed, a land that floweth with milk and honey. The land which we know is Israel. Uh, people like to call it Palestine, whatever. The actual land grant given unto the Hebraic Jews um, is a lot larger than the one that they have today. But that land, that land, okay? Verse 11. But the land whither ye go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. Verse 12. We read the rest for context. A land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it. From the beginning of the year, even on to the end of the year. Beg your pardon, i got to put my little thing here on my set of scriptures. A land that the Lord God cares for. Um, a lot of Christians like to say that you know, they don't outrightly deny that Israel is still the apple of God's eye, but a lot of Christians have fallen into this, well, the church has replaced Israel. And they say, no, we don't, no, we don't. But when they present to you their gospel, it's always in the replacement whatever, you know. It, it, it really is. It's, it's, it's fascinating in a way. It, it, it is fascinating. And there are some out there, I will give them this credit, that do that unintentionally, but that's what you're being taught by your Jesuit-trained pastors and, <laughs> and cemeterians. Yeah, that's exactly what I think about it. 
But the point of this little video today is I'm, I'm out doing my thing. Had a bad night last night. Could have... Uh, <laughs> Could have gone home, but uh, I ain't home, so here I am. <laughs> anyway, you know, we, especially in America, we need things to remind us of just how infinitesimal we truly are. That means small, by the way. Very small. And a problem that we in America see, a lot of people can't see with their eyes outside their own boundaries. What does that mean? Well, you ought to know what that means. It's pretty simple. But most of the times what we see, we equate as all there is in the world. Well, there is the, to you, right? Why do I need to worry? You know, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China, right? That kind of thing. But here is the thing. Israel... The Hebraic Jew is the apple of God's eye. And brethren, especially you, my American brethren, and you, you, uh, <laughs> uh, King and Bible, even Christians. Um, America is not the temperature gauge. Yes, the, the Lord sees everything. Yes, he does. But you know what? Um, God does favor. We just looked at it. Uh, God does favor the land of Israel, Zion, Jerusalem, the land that he promised, which is a lot bigger than what it is today, the land he promised to give Israel, Jacob. It's a lot bigger. But we just looked at it in Deuteronomy 11, verse 1 under verse 12. Um, the Lord, for whatever his reason, and he can do that, he, he chose Zion. He chose Israel, his servant, but he chose Zion, Jerusalem, that area as his thing you know with all yeah you'd be you know with all the stuff that we got going on in, in america and we make ourselves all this grandiose thing and then something happens where you're reminded of how puny you really are i think a lot of us uh in general will it might do us well to remember that okay that we're actually small and infinitesimal in the grand scheme, especially in the grand scheme of things, uh, we, we're nothing. We're dirt. America is not the temperature gauge of the world, people. It's Israel. It's over there. It's in the Middle East. It's the land of Israel. Okay? The land that, his, that he sees always. I mean, he sees everything. Yes, he does. But that, that's his chosen little thing. And the Jew is the apple of his eye. Remember, we have been grafted into their tree. I think a lot of you need to remember that. So, when we get all wrapped up in the pageantry and the theater that the Jesuit order is feeding us on the social media, you know, with the, the stupid election and the, excuse, beg your pardon, the election and all, you know, all that nonsense... Take a step back and remember that we're not even we're not even this big in the grand scheme of things. Who are we? And keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. Next time you start, hey, hey, you see this? Okay. Like I said, I had a, I had a bad night last night, and thankfully uh, a dear brother was there for me to. Um, to just read scripture to me. It was it was beautiful. It's beautiful. But um just remember. We're nothing. What's our life? It's a vapor. I could have died last night. You could have died last night. So what are you gonna do today? You're gonna sit on your at that desk smoking them cigarettes, causing all kinds of trouble for your God, Satan, huh? <laughs> yeah, this is your best life now. But we got waiting for us saints is a lot better than this, obviously. But while we're here, realize and remember your frailty. Realize and remember that, okay, and you kids, you need to remember this. You will if you make it to my age. In a moment like that, you can, you can go. What are you going to do with the day you've got today? Bye.